The Power of the Portrait. Today, we're going to take a deeper look into why portraits attract us so much. Painted portraits are some of our most recognisable images. The Mona Lisa, Van Gogh's self-portraits, Vermeer's Girl with a Pearl Earring. We are pack animals and people are what we tend to be most interested in. I remember being at a function related to the launch of my portrait series, Keys to Our Country, and a young man pointed out to me that portraiture was the domain of the elite. And I was shocked as I'd never seen it that way. I'd had my portrait done when I was three by Ingrid Earns, and mum always got silhouette cutouts of our profiles at the Royal Show. And I was familiar with the Charles Dickens book, Nicholas Nickleby, and there was the kindly portrait painter, Miss La Creevy, who earned a good living painting miniatures of the people in the streets of London for them. And growing up, art was part of our world and it didn't seem a really separate elite thing to me. In all my classrooms in primary school, there were portraits either of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, here painted by William Dargy with the wattle on her dress. And we loved that dress and our wattle. Interestingly, William Dargy always painted two portraits at the same time. So there are two originals of this portrait. In grade six and seven, there was this portrait of uh, Dame Mary Gilmore done in 1957 by William Dobell. And Dame Mary Gilmore was a writer who was an icon in Australia and she championed the disadvantage. And you can see her today on the $10 note. So portraits for me are about everyone, documenting life, attitude, dress, social norms, beauty, the horror of war. If you live in Australia, you'll know the very controversial annual portrait prize, the Archibald, that the nation loves to follow. William Dobell won the Archibald with a portrait of his friend, friend Joshua Smith. Well, he was a friend before the portrait and that portrait was lashed as a caricature and was the end of their friendship. And the Archibald has been dogged by public controversy since its inception in the early 1920s. It's all about people and therefore emotions are high and the portraits represent us all, how we see ourselves and who we aspire to be. So we tend to be aware of trends in portraiture and what gets public attention. And I found that artists most often painted their friends, their family or selfies as that's who they have to hand. This is a self-portrait by Robert Hannaford, Australia's greatest living artist, in my opinion. And this is one of his many portraits to be a finalist in the Archibald. Uh, Robert allowed me to paint one of his self-portraits for my prominent South Australian series. And his work really captures the personality and energy of the sitter. Once you go to the gallery and start looking into portraits, you might see distinctions like women painting women doing ordinary tasks. It's not just men in suits or society ladies. Yes, society members or leaders have long been memorialised in portraits to honour and recognise them, but portraits were used before photos made by those miniaturists to carry with you or send to your family or prospective matches. And these weren't only for the rich. Later, of course, photography made things increasingly accessible to everyone. I painted a series of women leaders, leading women's profile, in response to finding that only 6% of CEOs in Australia's top uh, 200 companies were women. I wanted the portraits to create conversations about women and leadership and encourage all of us to find ways to help young women to get to those positions. And these were presented on International Women's Day at Crown at the Women in Rotary Breakfast and then displayed at Deloitte for some time where they were exhibited and discussed and funds 
raised from the sale of them went to support vulnerable youth coming out of child protection to Bridge of Hope. And it was interesting to experience the hesitancy of those I painted at having a portrait done of them. And I felt as if I was asking a group of male CEOs the same thing, they'd have just said, how big is it going to be? You know? <laughs> so ultimately, those who said yes knew that they were doing it for all women. In fact, as I was painting the managing director of Bendigo Adelaide Bank, Marnie Baker, a staff member was lingering at the door watching with a smile on her face. And when I went up to her in the break, she said, oh, I'm so proud. You see, when one woman is honoured, so are all women honoured. So the portrait can be very powerful. In this portrait by John Singer Sargent of Madame X, a notorious socialite, her pose is considered vulgar at the time, flaunting herself. And that's probably not how we'd see it today, but it captures society's attitudes at that time. Ivor Heal, my favourite Australian portrait artist, was Australia's longest serving war artist, documenting the real horror of war uh, at the scene. And Canberra has a purpose built building with huge war scenes that he painted. When I was 16 and I was a member of the Royal South Australian Society of Arts, I sat doing life drawing with John Dowie and men who'd drawn with Ivy Hill. And they taught me how to do the foreshortening and encouraged me to sit at the central market and just draw all the people walking by and capture their energy and posture and attitudes. And to capture movement and attitude takes hours and hours of consistent, committed work. But I have learned ways to make it much, much easier. So how did I come to paint portraits? For me, portrait painting was not something I intended to do at all. It came about through a chance encounter or rather a series of loose connections that I allowed to inform my path. Um, you see, as someone who paints Australian plants, I'm often at the Botanic Gardens. And one day I was chatting to staff and Dennis Fisher, who didn't know me, asked what I do. And I said, I paint natives. And he said, paint me. He's an Aboriginal Australian and I was mortified at my faux pas. And I said, oh no, I, I, paint, I don't paint people, I paint plants. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I was terribly embarrassed. But anyway, at that time, my friend Mary mentioned an oil painting course and I wanted to learn to use oils. And uh, it was by the world-renowned artist, Robin Eli, and he used to play basketball with her boys and I'd watch them play basketball. And these connections, just I just put my name down for it and knew that it was in six months' time. And when I turned up to do the course and we were doing an, a mono underpainting, I was really surprised to see that there was Dennis's face, the guy who wanted me to paint him. So I decided I was going to have to find him again and paint his portrait. And I did. And when I did, I saw the shy pride and humility and joy of being immortalised in a portrait. And I realised there's power in portraiture. And also that the Aboriginal people of my country are not fated and honoured enough. And that began Keys to Our Country, my first portrait series. And I painted Aboriginal Australians who bring their culture into their work thereby teaching us more about Aboriginal culture because that's our way to working together in the future and sold those to raise funds for Aboriginal education. And I mention that to show the different ways you can use portraits because people love to engage with them. They can tell the story of the individual, celebrate them, honour them, create conversations about topical issues and tell stories. It's really an honour to paint someone's portrait. It's hard to articulate what's happening for the artist as we try to capture the essence of a person, a facet within them or the essence of them. And you'll find that people are touched by seeing their own portrait, seeing an aspect of them represented 
by someone else. We see that in Anne's portrait, Anne Doe's portraits. When I paint Australian wildflowers, I literally have a love experience with the beauty of that life. And it happens too with portrait painting. It's not to say that I fall in love with a person, but the wonder of the spark of life that makes humans unique and marvellous. As you paint a portrait, you connect with how amazing life is and how honoured we are to be alive. If you look at my video series on creative driver styles, it might help you to identify more about what you're connecting with in portraits. Do you like the ones that tell you something or the ones that ask you to think? You can see here the serenity and self-control in the Mona Lisa, an admirable attitude in her time, or more spontaneous, an emotional scream by Edvard Munch. The work of Pablo Picasso in his portraits of women tells us a lot about his attitude to women and his character more than the woman in the painting. The approaches we can take are endless. So go to the gallery or search Instagram and look at some portraits and ask yourself, what styles engage you? What style would you hope to create if you were the artist? If you're interested in portraiture, my course, How to Paint a Portrait is open and I'll take you through the steps I've learned to make it easier to create a successful portrait that you'll be proud of and someone will love. So if you found this interesting, please like, subscribe, check out my website for more about how to paint a portrait. I look forward to seeing you again soon.